actually. Are you ready, Bob? No. Yes. <laughs> okay. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us today after a bit of a break. I trust that everyone had a quiet weekend. I'm Teresa Marantet, CEO and Chief Nursing Officer of the Windsor-Essex County Health Unit. We continue to monitor COVID-19 in our community and work with our municipalities and healthcare partners and you, our residents, to help decrease the spread of COVID-19. Now is not the time to let our guard down. Please continue to be diligent in your efforts to stay at home. We are urging all of you to stay home unless absolutely necessary for essential reasons such as accessing health care services, shopping for groceries, picking up medication, walking pets when required, or supporting vulnerable community members with meeting essential needs. If you must leave your home, stay at least two meters apart from others. I will now share the most current case counts for our area. There are 25,680 confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Canada and 7,470 cases in Ontario. Chatham-Kent has 25 cases and Sarnia-Lambton has reported 118 cases. Michigan now has 25,635 cases with 6,781 cases in Detroit. We now have 349 confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Windsor, Essex. 30 people have recovered from COVID-19. 15% of our cases are between 40 and 49 years of age. 21% are between the ages of 50 and 59 years. And 15% of our cases are 80 years and above. 40% are male, 58% are female, and 2% are unknown at this time. Unfortunately, we are sad to report additional deaths due to COVID-19. Our community has lost a total of 13 people to this pandemic. 10 of these deaths have occurred in long-term care and retirement homes. Our health unit continues to work with seven long-term care and retirement homes that are currently experiencing COVID-19 outbreaks. We would like to sincerely thank EMS for their support this past weekend in assisting two of our homes in providing additional testing. The health unit continues to follow up directly with everyone who has tested positive and negative for COVID-19. Shortly, there will be the ability to access, access your results through an online portal. This option is not available at the at this time, but we expect the system to be up and running soon. For now, the health unit will contact you by phone to give you your results. We would like to remind you that if you have been tested and are awaiting results, you are to remain in self-isolation. Overall, 2,589 individuals have been tested for COVID-19, and of, the, these, of those tested, 365 tests are pending. Testing guidelines have been updated with an emphasis on testing symptomatic residents of long-term care and retirement homes. Guidance from the Ministry of Health requ requires testing of asymptomatic people, people without symptoms who are new admissions or readmissions to these homes within their first 14 days of admission. Residents being transferred from a hospital are to be tested prior to the transfer back to the home and all residents will be required to meet in self-isolation for 14 days following their admission. During an outbreak, testing increases to include asymptomatic residents who are contacts of all of the resident who is ill with COVID-19. Our health unit will continue to work with these homes to support infection protection and control measures, outbreak management and testing. Healthcare workers, caregivers, care providers, and first responders should also be tested as soon as possible if they develop symptoms of COVID-19. Certain gro groups have been prioritized for testing in the event of shortages of testing supplies, including symptomatic healthcare workers and staff who work in healthcare facilities, symptomatic residents and staff in long-term care and retirement homes, hospitalized patients, symptomatic members of remote, isolated, rural, and indigenous communities, 
symptomatic travelers identified at a point of entry to Canada, symptomatic first responders, firefighters, police, EMS, and individuals referred for testing by our health unit. Please con continue to visit WeChu.org for the most current information and case counts. Symptoms of COVID-19 include fever, cough, and difficulty breathing. However, other symptoms may be present, such as being extremely tired, falling, nausea, vomiting, and headaches. If you are feeling unwell and need to seek a health assessment for COVID-19, there are three options. Complete the online self-assessment on Ontario.ca, contact Telehealth Ontario, or call your primary care provider for a phone or a virtual assessment. They will be able to guide you in next steps, including contacting public health or attending an assessment centre. I will now turn it over to Dr. Wajid Ahmed, our Medical Officer of Health, for further updates regarding COVID-19. Good morning, everyone. I hope everyone had a good Easter and everyone followed our public health recommendations, stayed home mostly, maintain physical distance and not congregate to avoid COVID-19 spread. I would like to remind as we are dealing with COVID-19 pandemic in our region, Windsor Essex County is also facing another threat that is flooding along our shorelines. The water level is also rising and our municipalities are preparing to reduce the impact of flooding in our community. Please take all precautions to ensure the safety of yourself and your loved ones from flooding. We shared our epi epidemiological summary last Thursday, talked about projections and whether the measures are working in our community or not. We talked about the case counts and noted that through strong public health measures from all levels of government, including local leadership, we are able to keep almost 90% of these COVID-19 cases outside of our acute care system but we can also see that these numbers are still going up and as a community, we need to be mindful that these measures are in place for the long run to give us the benefit over the long period of time. So we, this is not the time that we have to let our guards down. As a community and with our support from our community partners, we are all of us are playing our role in flattening the curve. These statistics are giving us the motivation and confidence to keep doing what we are doing with our public health measures. All staff at the Windsor Essex County Health Unit, with the exception of very few, are dedicated to ensure the public health follow-up of all cases and contacts uh, happening in our community to keep us safe and protect our healthcare system. The response to COVID-19 and the concept of flattening the curve has really highlighted the importance of disease prevention and health promotion by doing the work uh, before we actually start to see the cases. Since last week, the focus is now um, move, shifted towards uh, prevention and spread in long-term care homes and the retirement homes where our most vulnerable residents are. With the help of our community partners and more specifically EMS, uh, the long-term care homes were able to test more individuals in their facility to pick up cases even with mild symptoms. This will allow them to put strong measures in place before the spread further happens in these facilities. And thank you, uh, Essex Windsor EMS, for your support. Our team of public health inspectors, supported by our Infectious Disease Prevention Program nurses and uh, the leadership, including myself, are, we are all talking to the area long-term care homes and retirement homes to ensure that they are implementing the active screening for COVID-19 and are supported uh, to do the assessment on their residents and their staff as well. As we can see, most of these cases are now coming from the long-term care homes that are currently in outbreak, and we are working closely with the homes to manage these outbreak in a timely manner. It is with great regret and sadness that we are still losing our loved ones to COVID-19 in our community, and we all need to act together to prevent these losses in our community. We were able to manage and rescind the COVID-19 outbreak from one of our home, and we hope to manage other cases and other outbreaks in these other facilities and long-term care home. Over the weekend, a number of directives were issued by the Chief Medical Officer of Health for the province of Ontario. Uh, that includes implementing a universal masking policy in all the long-term care homes uh, to protect our healthcare workers and also to limit the spread of uh, transmission in these uh, facilities. It was all, we were also directed to increase testing in the long-term care home and retirement home to detect cases early and ability to contain them early. 
the uh, support for staffing and the personal protective equipment for the long-term care homes are uh, also happening to meet the needs and to implement the measures that are currently recommended by all levels of um, um, uh, by the Chief Medical Officer of Health and also locally. We hope that all these measures will help to contain these outbreaks in the long-term care home quickly. Thank you. Uh, just curious, can you clarify, because there's a lot of confusion out in the, in the community. Um, if someone in the household has been tested positive or is awaiting a test, how should that affect the household? Are we talking lockdown for everybody? Or should that one person who is waiting for the test or has been tested positive just self-isolate, be locked in a room and fed through the window? Um, so good question and I think uh, that is why it's not a straight answer all the time so generally speaking if anyone who is in the home when the person was symptomatic and uh, was uh, and, and everyone was living in the same let's say like they are, they are not separated by like you know there's a basement that uh, anyone else lives have a separate exit entr entrance and they're not really connected that's different versus someone who is in the same home and they all congregate, they have a common shared space. Anyone in that kind of setting, yes, if someone who was symptomatic when everyone was exposed, everyone should be in isolation while the person is, uh, is, is recovering. And until we get a better answer of who is exposed, who is not exposed, that's the general message. But when our nurses are connecting with these individuals, we, we get that information. And sometimes we are restricted by what information is provided to us so if a person or a case if they're not identifying everyone who lives with them on a regular basis we may not be aware of those individuals but as a general recommendation if you are in the same household if someone is positive and they were symptomatic when and they were not self-isolating at that time everyone should be self-isolating okay so then after the 14 days whether you're self-isolating all that um, some are being forced to go back to work Talked to somebody yesterday. They were telling me that they're still showing symptoms, but still being forced to go to work, even though she's symptomatic, and that you know this person's passed it along to other family members. So, I mean, do they need a doctor's note to go back or to stay away from work, or because they're afraid to lose their jobs if they say anything, right? So, what would you recommend? So, good question, and I think I would say that uh, they should uh, connect with a healthcare provider, they should connect with us. Uh, the key is, if you are symptomatic, if you have symptoms, you shouldn't go to work, period. Whether you're talking about people who are in self-isolation or who are in not self-isolation, if you are developing symptoms, which is suggestive of any respiratory illness, whether it's COVID or even general flu, you shouldn't go to work. And, uh, and I think people should take that responsibility, this is a social responsibility on all of us. If you're symptomatic, you shouldn't go. And if there's any question that they want to clarify, they should connect. Generally, our staff tell these people it's 14 days, yes, it's a good marker, but 14 days plus 48 hours symptom-free. That's what we normally tell people, that you have to be symptom-free for 48 hours before you can go back to work. But some of those conversations happen individually, uh, taking into consideration um, um, their risk and uh, what they're experiencing. Just about nurses, another, another clarification, uh, U.S. nurses, uh, black and white, is this straight up, you want them self-isolating when they come back from work? I think that's the direction and that's the recommendations from uh, Public Health Ontario as well, uh, that it is in their safety, uh, that they should be self-isolated, it's, it's what we call is work-home self-isolation, and anyone who is going there, when they're returning, they should be self-isolating. Any questions from Windsor? Okay. Any questions from the Windsor Star? Uh, yes. So you, you said you've begun testing asymptomatic residents of long-term care homes. Um, how often are you able to test those people? Are you testing them once or are you retesting them over a uh, longer period of time? Or what will that look like? Uh, so good question. Uh, what we are saying right now is there is a risk and benefit of testing asymptomatic residents at home. 
And uh, right now, based on what we have, we are trying to test asymptomatic resident if they had had any contact with the case. So if, some, if someone who is in the same room as the case, even if they're asymptomatic, we want to test them. Anyone who is in the adjacent rooms, yes, we want to test them. But anyone who has never been in contact with anyone, those are not the priority at this time. Maybe sometime later, because then it would lead to another question that you rightly asked, that are we doing it regularly? Because you know the test is only good at, the, at that time. And if they are asymptomatic and if it's negative, it doesn't mean that they won't get the, get the disease uh, even in the future. So there has to be this balance that how frequently we are testing them. So I, uh, right now we are focusing on asymptomatic residents who may be at a higher risk, and those are the ones that are currently being tested. Okay, and uh, how often are you able to follow up with people who have tested positive considering how large those numbers are growing and how many staff you've got working? Uh, so we try to connect with them uh, pretty regularly. Some of those who are high risk, they get more contacts than from us. But uh, typically, it's at least every two to three days we get in touch with them. And uh, we, we get some updates uh, with respect to uh, their symptoms and any other questions that they may have. But in all the cases, anyone who has, uh, who has come back positive, there are specific instructions that are given to them. And they can contact us as well if they have any questions or concerns, especially if they need any any kind of medical care, if they need to go to the hospital, if they need to go to any healthcare provider, our recommendation is you need to let us know, you need to help let your healthcare provider know that you are uh, positive for COVID and uh, so that appropriate arrangements can be made in terms of, uh, you know, uh, protecting uh, others while these people need care. But in any case, those individuals who are positive, we do not recommend or we strongly suggest that they should not go outside. They, they, they should not go outside. They have to have uh, other arrangements to get whatever, everything that they need. They, they can only go outside if they have to go for a medical appointment or, uh, or to the hospital for any urgent medical need. And again, that has to be arranged before they go there. Yes, uh, good morning. I have a question about the five new deaths. Do we have any further information on uh, age range? Were they in the hospital? Was it long term care? Do we have a little more information? So, three of these uh, deaths were female in their 90s, one female in her 80s, and one female in her 70s. We received a, a I get a statement from here on Cherries that there was a third death on Sunday at 1130, but it hasn't been reflected in the numbers. So we are getting some of those in information as uh, quickly as possible. Uh, there could be some delay, and uh, all those uh, reports that we receive, we update on our website, and uh, I think the, uh, we typically do it at 1 o'clock or uh, at, nine, at 9 in the morning, but uh, we, we try to keep it up to date as much as possible. So it really depends on when the homes are reporting it to us and the moment that they report it to us because we don't get the reports of death, we do get the reports of positive, sometimes from the home and uh, there are instances that the homes are notified first before us and then the moment we are notified either through the home or through the lab, we update it. In our daily update, we include those numbers, and same as the case with if there, if any home is a, uh, reporting a death, the moment they report us, it goes into our data, and then we report it back to the public. Is there any possibility there'll be a further breakdown in the confirmed cases, going uh, you know windows and a big county as opposed to it together, or going you know west side of the county, south of the county, just to give a better breakdown because 349 cases in a large area really doesn't paint a picture. Uh, a good question, and this is under consideration, but uh, right now, I, again, I, I would just caution in terms of the breakdown because it does give a false sense of security to some and a false sense of, uh, um, I guess, uh, concern uh, in some community versus the other. It is out there, and uh, everyone, doesn't matter where they live, have uh, 
pretty much an equal chance of contracting the disease. So I don't want to undermine the uh, the risk to any resident anywhere they're living. But uh, we uh, we 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 considered uh, providing the breakdown, and we will we will look into it and see if it's possible for us to do that. We had a question from someone asking about if heated air affects the virus. If it helps to kill it, is that accurate? Is that been tested, or is that just a myth right now? Uh, there is a lot of uh, research going on, and I'm not aware of any research that actually showed that. People are trying a number of things, and uh, there are a lot of information out there. None of that is proven, and that's why I would uh, I would not comment whether the effect whether it, it would be effective or not. But uh, anything that is coming from credible scientific research, we would uh, provide those recommendations. All right, thank you. Any questions from Sammy over the weekend, we saw increases of 3, 9, and 11. Now we're seeing increases of 35. How discouraging is this? Uh, so good question, and I think it's a combination of two things for sure. What we noted is uh, there was a little bit of delay in the lab in reporting some of those results, and uh, so that's one aspect of getting more cases today. And secondary, as, uh, as uh, we mentioned, that we have tested a bunch of other people in the long-term care home uh, proactively, even with mild symptoms, and uh, that resulted in more cases that are showing up. The good thing is even when we are looking at the breakdown of wh where these cases are coming from, are they coming from the community or from those long-term care homes, most of these cases now are coming from the long-term care home, which is another issue, which we are working with them, and, uh, and those are the high-risk population, and uh, it's contained. We will continue to work with them, but uh, from a community level, yes, we are still seeing some cases. There is, a, there is this balance that uh, when you're actively screening more people, there is this risk of getting more uh, more positive, and that's what we have seen even with uh, with some of the delays as well. Um, it is concerning, but uh, we we would want to get on top of it, working closely with all these long-term care homes to make sure that whoever um, is tested, majority of them are tested, and if they are getting uh, the right support, we should be able to to contain it and uh, get rid of this outbreak uh, quickly. And I and I just wanted to clarify, the 13 deaths, you said 10 were in long-term care homes? In total, yes, 10 deaths were associated with long-term care homes, meaning that they were the residents of long-term care home, and uh, three uh, were uh, members of the community at large, um, uh, yeah. And those residents who passed away, I take it they passed away in hospital or did they pass away in the long-term care home? There is a breakdown in that. Uh, I don't have a breakdown, but it's a combination of both. Uh, a majority of them passed in the long-term care home. Few of them passed in, uh, uh, in, in at the hospital. Okay, thank you. Any questions from Blackburn? Three hundred and sixty-five tests uh, that are currently pending. And that increase is just based on the fact that you are testing that many more people. Uh, yes, we are, and as well as uh, every other jurisdiction. So there is a sudden increase in the number of testing across the province, and um, yeah. So hopefully, we we'll, we should be able to get those results back quickly. They are helping us do the testing. So basically, they are going into these homes and they are swabbing all these uh, residents uh, who are otherwise swabbed by the nurses and just because of the capacity and then them uh, stepping up and uh, taking uh, this help and supporting our community. I think that's a great initiative from them and I really uh, appreciated their support in, uh, in, in this uh, uh, getting these tests done. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.